Um, yeah, so uh, I'm Michael. I uh, kind of sort of run this school thing called Epicodus, where we teach people how to code and uh, help them kind of get from having dabbled in coding to the point where they can be junior level developers. And uh, so one thing that we've that I've learned a lot about teaching people how to code is that it's really important to break things down into small pieces. So you know, the first time I taught somebody how to do Rails, I was like, oh, it's awesome. You just do Rails new, whatever, and then Rails G scaffold thingamabob, and then like you have this app, and you understand like REST and MVC and OO and databases and all this stuff, yeah. right? Um, so it, yeah, it turned out that it wasn't quite that simple. So I started kind of like breaking things down into smaller and smaller pieces, and along the way, I was like, you know, I really need to like. You know, I teach them like OO oh, oh, with pure Ruby, and then we do some stuff with SQL and databases, and uh, we should use Active Record before we throw the entire Rails giant MVC framework at them. Um, so I started playing around with how do I use Active Record without Rails, and uh, and that's so mainly my motivation was just for teaching. But I've seen this come up uh, in other places as I was looking around about how to do this. People trying to use Active Record in Sinatra apps, or other people just you know like needing to do some sort of command line app or some other thing where you're using a database, you aren't using Rails, Active Record would be nice for what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of like straightforward stuff about how to set up Active Record without Rails. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Um, so oh, maybe that's a little too big. All right. So I've got this app here. and. Uh, and so I've got I've got these folders. I've got well, so I've got uh, I've got this gem file, and I've just got a couple of gems that I need here. I have this Active Record gem, and then I have this special gem called Active Record Migration. So one of the annoying things about Rails is that it has its own special way of getting of getting rake tasks into uh, it available for you to run at the command line. Um, and so there's this gem that some kind soul put together that basically takes all of Active Record's rake tasks and makes it really easy to uh, to expose it without Rails. And, um, and then also the PG gem here for using Postgres. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, gonna try to live code this. I've got a backup plan uh, with an app that's already working if it doesn't work. So, uh, so I've got my gem file here, and I can just bundle it up. And then while that's running, um, I'm going to make a, uh, actually, I'm going to follow my notes here. So this is my notes for my students here. So I've got a, I've installed my gems, and I'm actually using Bundler, which I haven't introduced to them at this point in the lesson. So I've got a DB folder, and this is going to be very similar to the Rails DB folder. Uh, and I don't have a config folder. There's in the way the Active Record migrations likes to work is that uh, you put your Active Record configuration in the DB folder, uh, and so I'm just going to follow their uh, what they do there. And then I'm going to make a rake file so that we have our rake tasks for uh, for this. Uh, this project. So, how do you do that? I just do it from here. Um, touch rake file. So now we've got this rake file, and then the first thing that I need to do in my rake file is to uh, require the Active Record migrations gem, and then the next thing I need to do is uh, I run load tasks, which will load up all the rake tasks from Active Record, letting me use them now from the command line. And I think that's. Oh, so now I've got to actually set up my database configuration. So in my DB folder, I'm going to make a file called uh, config.yaml. Why can I not remember? Is it uh, AML or just ML? ML. And uh, yeah, and then it's just like your database YAML file. Um, so I'll make a couple uh, things here, which all pretty straightforward, saying I'm using Postgres adapter and uh, the name of my databases for my different environments. So now, um, now I've got my database configured, and now I can actually just run the same thing, uh, things from my command line, like rake db. I think I'm going to need to drop it first, because I was already playing around with this. Uh, no file or directory. Damn it, live coding. Uh, Config.yaml. Hmm. So let's. Uh, Let's switch to the backup plan and go into here. Um, so this one is uh, is all set up. So db config yaml, same thing in here, and uh, should just be able to run rake db uh, drop. And well, this sucks. Uh, <laughs> oh, I need to start my Postgres server. That's uh, that'll help things out. So let's try that again. Uh, yeah, there we go. So that works. And then rake db create. And uh, just like using it in Rails, very simple to set up. Pretty much the same kind of things. 
Um, and then uh, for creating migration, so we can't do like Rails, G, migration, whatever. Uh, so that's one of the nice things that uh, the Active Record Migrations gem gives us. We can say uh, rake db new migration, and then the migration name, like we'll call it uh, create tasks. Uh, and then this will, uh, well, live coding, sorry. Uh, rake db new migration. Let's see what my notes say. Uh, so rake db new migration. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. Um, what's up? Yeah, you know, that's, uh, I've never had to do it that way. New migration, db new migration, dance. Does that do anything different? No. All right, I'll try the square brackets. I've never had to use them before. There you go. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> um, so we, uh, we get this new migration, and it's called dance, uh, which is a really terrible name for migration. But uh, OK, so then this is going to, you know, same thing uh, here. We can just do like you know, def change, create table, uh, dancers, uh, do whatever, uh, t.name, uh, t.string. OK, so then you know, basically it's all the same at this point out. You can run rake db and migrate, and that will probably blow up because I'm not doing something right. Oh, hey, it actually ran. Uh, and then in your classes, like here I've got a task thing. This is my, uh, my to-do list application, and it just works like you would normally expect. Um, and then in, your, uh, in my UI here, actually I have a better version of it here, I think. Uh, no, in my UI here. So you know, I've just got this command line UI. We've got like kind of a main loop, and then uh, you know, you can press A to add a task, and then it'll bring you to the add tasks thing here. When we want to actually create a task, then we say, hey, give me the description. We get it, and then we run task.create, just like Active Record. It's just normal. There's not a whole lot more to say to that. I could just keep going about all the ways that it's just Active Record, but it's just Active Record using the command line app. Um, the last thing, oh, you know, the last thing that you do need to know is uh, how to configure your database setup. So here, um, uh, this, I'm going to get rid of this because that's distracting. So we're going to load our, um, our YAML file uh, and grab all the database configurations out of them. So we're just uh, loading up that DB config YAML. And then uh, we're going to uh, grab the development configuration by looking in that. This will give us a, a hash of hashes, I think it is. And this gives us the development configuration. And then we pass the development configuration into this active record base established connection, which is what Rails does when it boots up. It establishes a connection to your database based off of the database YAML file. Here we're just doing the same thing, but writing it out by hand ourselves. Um, and then in your, uh, like in your spec helper, you'd have to do the same thing where here we're doing the same thing, but this time we're grabbing the test configuration, grabbing the test key. And that matches up to development and test here. Uh, and uh, hopefully that's more or less uh, good. You, oh, the annoying thing, RSpec uh, doesn't, uh, it looks for Rails when it's, uh, you can't use transactional fixtures because it's just looking for Rails as a, um, as a constant. And so it just chokes on that. There's something about RSpec 3 about them kind of getting rid of some of that. But I played around for like five minutes today and couldn't get it working and then went on to do other things. Uh, so maybe there's, maybe if I'd spent 15 minutes, it would have worked. Um, but at some point, somebody should fix that. Maybe I will. Any questions? Cool. Thank <laughs> you.